You know, quilting a quilt with an embroidery machine is kind of fun. It makes it look like you have a long arm machine and the machine does a great job in giving you a perfect design. So, but how do you do a big one, right? There are strategies to doing a much larger quilt on a regular standard size machine. We're gonna be using the Baby Lock Vesta and doing a pretty big quilt with embroidery and, well, I think there's tips and tricks you might want to see. I'm Kathy. This is Sewing Tech Talk. <laughs> Let's make a quilt and then quilt embroider it. <laughs> so the handout for today's video is this great pack of embroidery thread. Yes, you can use it for quilting. Every time you like, share, like, share, or comment, you're entered for a chance to win. So uh, do that and then check back in a couple days to claim your prize if you win it, right? So we're going to be doing the uh, embroidery quilting uh, on the, using the Baby Lock Vesta. It has several built-in quilting designs which fill this great hoop that comes with the machine, right? So the, it has those. If you want to do a biggish quilt, what's the issue? The issue is, well, you know, it's a big enough hoop, but there's only so much room to the right. So are there strategies that we can use to minimize the amount of the quilt that's on the right and yet finish the whole quilt? So we'll need a quilt to <laughs> embroider. So I have a quilt that is a really simple one, great for a beginner, and that would be uh, easy for just about anyone to do. The instructions for the quilt and the process we're going through today is in my handout. I have a handout for this and all my other videos. Go to the description below and, and look for the link. It's usually in blue. Click on that and you'll find the handout for this one with instructions for this simple quilt and the process we're going through today and all my other videos, just in case you need a little bit more information on some other subject. So now this block is super simple. And like I said, there's instructions in the handout. Uh, my quilt that I'm gonna be making, and it could take me a couple days. We're gonna get started today. I have 48 blocks to make. So you guys are gonna have to time tramble into tomorrow really quick. I won't be able to do that. I have to put together 48 blocks. So the, the vest is set up. It's an, a combination machine. It's a quilting, a quilting and sewing, mending, crafting machine, all the sewing features, but it also does embroidery as well. So we're gonna start out in the sewing feature today. So I have the machine set up. Now this is my block. It's really simple. It can be made out of uh, a jelly roll, uh, which is a set of about 42 and a half inch strips. Or you can go ahead and cut your strips uh, ahead of time from scraps that you have. It's a great scrap buster. From each one of those strips you can get two blocks and the uh, strips are two and a half inches wide so you'll need a two and a half inch square for the center that's one color two two and a half inch strips for either side and then two six and a half by two and a half inch strips and you can cut those lickety split if you're cutting off of a off of a pre-folded two and a half inch cut strip. So like I said, go to the handout for that information. But what we need to do is set up the Vesta for sewing a quarter inch seam. And there's lots of choices on the machine. So here is the standard, here is the standard presser foot. And if I go to the screen of the machine, I could actually rotate through and find a stitch that's designed especially for piecing with that with that foot. So with the regular presser foot, if I choose this stitch, I'm using the right side of the foot as the guide for me to know how far to put that raw edge. Uh, the, the machine also comes with this foot, which is pretty cool. This is a great foot and you can use it for, because um, the needle on the, on the baby like Vesta can be moved. If I was in here, I could come in and I can change the position of that needle but I also have left right shift so I can change it a quarter millimeter at a time which is a thread so I could use this foot and actually I would use any one of these marks as a, as a guide for for doing my quarter inch seam now if you're a garment sewer what also can happen is you can use this any one of these guides for any width of seam that you want a half inch seam five sixteenths whatever you're using 
There's also an optional foot available for the Vesta, and it's pretty cool. It's the uh, Baby Lock quarter inch foot. I like it because it has a very wide profile down here on the bottom. It has a physical guide to help you uh, guide the raw edge of that fabric, and it gives you marks front and back. Like I said, this is an optional foot. The feet don't cost they're not that big of an investment. So if you're gonna do a lot of piecing, it's a good foot and I recommend it. I'm gonna use that foot today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna snap the foot on. The feet just snap on, most of them snap on. There's some that don't. Okay, there we go, find our happy place. Now I'm gonna go back to the regular straight stitch that's in the middle by touching that button. An electronic machine like the Vesta automatically goes to any stitch that you've selected and then you can adjust that stitch from there. It will even memorize your settings if you have a special set setting like you like. So I'm gonna move that needle just a hair over to the right and I can, I can choose that left right shift and move it over just a little bit to the right. So you can use that guideline on the foot but if you have a vision issue like me, sometimes you look at it a little bit different than your neighbor does and you can set it up exactly for what you like. So having done that, that's okay. I could put it in the memory if I wanted to. I'm ready to go. We'll put these aside. And basically the block is super simple. You're simply going to sew the, the uh, two and a half inch squares on either side of that center two and a half inch square. Now the Vesta it has automatic scissors. So if I want to, I can touch this scissor button and it's gonna trim the thread for me. It's a big time saver when you're doing a block. So there's that first seam. There's my quarter inch seam. There's my second side. Now, if you're a beginning sewer or quilter, there's another advantage to having an electronic machine besides the machine kind of being automatically set up when you select a stitch. It has a speed control right up here. So if you're not used to sewing quickly or you haven't developed your skill set and pressing the foot pedal just a little bit more delicately, you can tell the machine to sew with a maximum top speed that's lower that you might be more comfortable with. So you can adjust that and then you can leave that setting there. And if you're a beginner, you know, it's kind of like training wheels. So I've come to the end. I'm going to use those scissors. You get really used to that. And what I should do is take this block and press both of these to the outside using my handy dandy iron, but I'm just going to kind of stitch them and hold them down so that we can hurry along the process. There's two thirds of the first block. Now I have, for this quilt that I'm gonna be making and the instructions you have in your handout, I have 48 blocks to make. So I'm gonna invite you to put yourself in some time travel tunnel and meet me on this time tomorrow and I should have those done. And I'm gonna start the process to show you how to do embroidery quilting, big quilt, standard size machine, Full skies quilt with a six and a quarter by 10 hoop. We can totally do it and it's gonna be easy. So get on your time travel wings. I'm gonna see you tomorrow. Welcome time travelers. <laughs> I have been busy. It's the next day here, but for you, it's only been a couple seconds. At any rate, let's talk about the strategies for doing a big quilt on a standard size embroidery machine. Now the Baby Lock Vesta has this great six and a quarter by 10 hoop. It's awesome. And it has built in designs for doing single run, continuous quilting, two or three of them. They're great. So we need to do a big quilt. So we need some strategies. So here is my strategy. And this can work really on any size quilt if the quilt is something that can be put together like with blocks, okay? 
Now, if it did have one big area, you could probably still figure out how to do this. You might do the center and go out from the sides because here's what we're shooting for. Here is how the hoop goes on the machine, right? It attaches right here and right here is the side of the machine. So what happens is we need to have minimal, minimal area here of the big bulky quilt. So what I do is I do it in strips, okay? So here's the first strip. The second thing I do when I do some embroidery quilting is I only go through the top layer and the batting using the embroidery whenever possible. Why? Well, on the back of embroidery, sometimes embroidery is really not meant to be two-sided. Now, we can tweak it and we can do that, but I want this process to be fun <laughs> and I don't have to want to worry about it as I go through and do my quilting. So I go through the top layer and the batting only. Then, when I get all that done, it's quilted, I layer it with the backing, and then I just do some straight line quilting to quilt all those layers together. We'll get to that as soon as we get this done. So the first thing I do is I get my full size batting and I need to divide and conquer. The first one I can do and there's not very much to the right of the hoop as I go down, right? Not a problem. As I hoop this and go down and do all the individual blocks that I can reach with my hoop, then there's not much to the right of the hoop to be in the harp of the machine. What happens as we go further and further and further through the quilt, there's more and more and more on the right hand side. Or is there? What you can do is you can take your full size batting for the hoop, for the quilt, put this down for a second, and you can split it right down the middle. Why? Well, what you can do is split it right down the middle and I've sewed these blocks. I've already quilted them. I took the next layer of blocks, added them on just like that. Now when I quilt it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quilt it this way. So the quilt's upside down and not very much to the right of the needle. You'll see that when we get to the machine. Pretty clever, right? So I can get this put on there. I found I can do a couple at a time. This edge of the batting, how do we put that back together? Well, it's, it's stabilizer to the rescue. So what I do is I cut it, I label it where it needs to go together. This is a strip of fusible no-show mesh. It's the new version is power mesh. It's fusible and I lay the batting, but it, so it's not overlapping. Put the fusible bat, uh, stabilizer on the top and just press it down. And I can do that in strips, however many strips it takes so that I only have, what's the trick? Just a little bit to the right of the hoop. That way I have a minimal amount in that harp of the machine and I'm not fighting a giant quilt all stuffed in there. So what I do, is I do that. As I go, I add the strips. I sew them on. These I sewed on. I could do two at a time. So I sewed them through the batting and the, and the, um, and the piecing. That quilts it too, right? And I push it off to the side and then I hoop. Now let's talk about hooping really fast. So I'm going to take this off and show you basically one more, one more trick to make sure this is easy because we're shooting for easy and fun. Because that's what sewing should be, right? So here is that stabilizer. I use Floriani Power Mesh Fusible Cutaway. Just cut, stri just cut strips of it and it's just going to join that quilt together as I go. But we're still on the first part. Let's get that hooped. So here is my hoop. Okay. Now, remember, I want a minimal amount on this side. So when I get my quilt started up and put together, it's easy to find the side that's going to give me the minimal on that side. And I'm going to hoop it up to reach as much as I possibly can. So there's a trick. When I first do it, when I first 
do my first hooping, I checked out how big my design was. And I hope you can see this. I'm going to hold it up so that you can see it. Do you see on the side of my hoop, I have these little pieces of tape and marks. Now, that is the area I want to have the part of my quilt that I'm quilting in when I hoop it. So I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to find the next area that I'm quilting with embroidery. Lay it on out. Now notice on the back I have like a no slip liner which makes this hoop not want to move. That's kind of cool. And we're going to lay this out. Pull it on up, get our hoop on there, make sure the smallest amount is to the right hand side, and get that padding laid out flat, get everything up. You could pin this part if you wanted to. Get it on up. Now I find the part that I need to quilt, and I'm going to center the block. Easy to do on this one. Now if it wasn't, I could mark it. I'm going to put the area I'm quilting between these marks right here. Bring it on in, and I'm just going to move it so it meets that bottom hoop. After you do this a couple times, because you're going to be rehooping this quilt, yeah, more than twice, let's just say that, you get pretty good at finding that happy sweet spot where everything is going to go in. If it doesn't fit on in, you may need to loosen the hoop, because why? Well, you have a much bigger, fluffier thing going in here. So I loosen the screw just a tiny bit, find the center part, push everything on in. Now the Vesta has a great way to move that design around, but if the design completely fits, I'm going to want to hoop it pretty good from the beginning. And if I wasn't talking, I'd have been hooped a couple seconds ago. So I'm ready to be hooped. Small amount on the left hand side. Let's go to the machine and I'm going to show you. There's two or three really nice continuous embroidery designs in the Vesta that are single run and they're just great for this kind of a quilting. So let's go over to the Vesta. We'll get started. I have a few more to go, but they're only three minutes each. It goes really fast. So I'll see you at the Vesta. <laughs> okay, here we are at the Vesta. We're all hooped. Now, just to review, as there's the part that I've already quilted. Here's the part that I am quilting, and I'm only going to quilt the next two rows, and I'm going to go down each row because I have very little on the right of the machine. As this quilt grows, it's going to be going that way and going over the arm of the machine and that kind of bulk I can control, right? Okay, so I hooped it as good as I can. I used my little marks on the hoop to make sure I got it right in there because the design I'm going to choose kind of mostly fills up this hoop. There's not a lot of room to wiggle it and get it in the right position. So I have very minimal amount of space to move it around. Now, if you don't want to deal with that, if you don't think you're as good a hooper, choose a smaller design, right? So you can choose a smaller design and it's easier to manipulate it once you get it hooped. And the Vesta has a great system for showing you where this design is in the hoop. So let me show you where these fun designs are in the Vesta. These are built in. Now you can always go out and buy additional ones. There's tons of designs out there. The ones you're looking for, if you're going to quilt the quilt, it's a single run design. And it usually starts at one end and ends at the other. Now let's see where they are on the Vesta. So on the Vesta, I'm going to come up to this area right here, and they're right in this tab. There might be others in there, but these are the three that I found. And I'm going to go to the very end. There's one, and these are all single run two, I think. But look how cool these are. And then this is the one that I chose. I thought that was really, really pretty. See how it's really neat? It kind of goes through all these different... Um, uh, it's just a single run. It's pretty cool. But what I did do actually is I widened it just a little to fit into my block. How? So what I did is I did that and I put it into the memory. Let's go and let's find where I put it in the memory. Now if you make adjustments to the machine you can put the design in the memory. And... There it is right there. I colored it a different color so I could see that I had changed it. See how I made it a little bit wider? 
perfect and that fits just right into my block so I'm going to go edit end now in this screen I have my great system for finding out where I have this design placed in relationship to my quilt this is called the trial key now when I touch it I can go to any of these the center is where it is now. I can go to any of these eight points around the block and see if I am in the right location. So when I go up to the upper left hand corner, for example, the machine's going to move all the way up there and I can just go to all the different areas and check and make sure I've done everything exactly where I want it to be. Looks like I hooped it pretty good. If I didn't, I can go to any part that I want to match, stay there, touch OK, and lower my presser foot. And I can come here and I can use these keys to move it just slightly if I need to. That looks pretty good. I can come back here, check the other corner. Yep, that looks pretty good. Or actually while I'm here, I can use the trial key and it'll automatically go around all the different areas. OK. Now let's go to embroidery. Now this design, it looks big, it fills the hoop. It's only 2,000 stitches, it's only going to take three minutes. And that, my friends, is pretty fast. Now yes, you're going to have to re-hoop as you go down the quilt, but it's only going to be three minutes at a time at the machine. And quite honestly, I did these first two rows, it didn't take me that long. So I'm going to continue to do this. I'm going to finish up my quilt. When we come back, you're going to have to time travel again. When we come back, I'm going to show you how I do the stitching to put the, I'm going to put the back on. And we're just going to stitch a little bit in the ditch between all these rows, all put together. And in the instructions, I have an extra little bonus of how we're going to bind it and do the backing at the same time. So get on your time traveling shoes. You're going to have to run. No, I'm going to do it all for you. <laughs> Look how nice this turned out. <laughs> it's really densely created, <laughs> densely quilted, which is the look I really, really wanted. And remember, we did this on the Vesta. It's a standard size embroidery machine. And look at the beautiful, beautiful quilting. Oh my gosh. It looks like, well, it looks like I'm either a professional, had it professionally done, or, well, you can fill in the rest. And what I did is after I got all the blocks done, and don't forget the handout shows you the process. Very little was on the right hand side of the machine in the harp of the machine. So it was an easy process. And I did all that. Now, once I got that done, remember it was the top and the batting, then I came in and I just did a stitch down all the rows. I could have come this way, but I didn't have to. And it looks really good. The other thing I did was I really enjoyed the back that I chose. What I did is I chose a back which was, uh, I just really love this fabric. I've been waiting for a quilt to put it on. Now I liked it so much I wanted it to be an edge around the outside edge of the quilt. So basically you can bring that backing and, and bring it to the front. And I created a two inch border around the, around the quilt. Just brought the backing up to the front and sewed it down and ironed it down. Oh, it tells you all about that in the handout. And I think it adds a really nice edge to this quilt. You can use that technique for any kind of a quilt. And it's really nice for baby quilts because it's a soft edge. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a blast doing this quilt. It turned out <laughs> better than I expected. And the Vesta, it was an awesome partner. Standard size machine, big quilt, embroidery quilting. You can do it. I'm going to shoot it off to George. He's going to tell you a little bit more about the Vesta. And thanks for joining me today. Thanks, Kathy. Once again, that was a great presentation. Don't forget to click on the link to download Kathy's uh, guide on that incredible project. Um, now, every once in a while, a machine's introduced to the industry that really offers high performance at a great value, and that's the Babylock Vesta. Not only is it a great sewing and quilting machine, 
but it also is an incredible embroidery machine. The embroidery features include a hoop that's larger than 10 by 6, and it has a, a wonderful color touchscreen. And look at this beautiful embroidery. Plus, it removes the jump stitches, and it even has a special uh, software program that sends your design via Wi-Fi right to the machine. Now, that's not all, though. For a sewing machine, it has the automatic fabric sensor that senses fabric from heavy denim to sheer fabric to working with elastic or even uh, a ribbing on a collar like a, a t-shirt knit. But quilting features, it actually will sew in different directions. We have some designs that are incredible for going down the sashing border. It has an automatic quarter inch so you can do your piecing, plus all kinds of wonderful decorative stitches. So as you see, this is an incredible sewing, quilting, and embroidery machine. Now, uh, we have a very special buy on this machine. This machine has a manufacturer suggested list price of $59.99, but right now it's on sale for $39.99, and we're including free shipping across the country, as well as uh, interest-free financing is available. I want to make some, a very special offer for those who are watching Sewing Tech Talk with Kathy, and that is with a mystery bonus. Why is it a mystery bonus? Well, I don't have a lot of them, but I want to make sure those who are contacting me, all you have to do is mention Kathy our Sewing Tech Talk with Kathy, and I have this bonus value that is incredible. So give us a call at 1-800-865-9664 and discover how easy it is to get an incredible sewing, quilting, and embroidery machine. Bye for now.